Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, we're going to show how you can use some of the solver controls to help get you the solve that you're looking for. So here's our shot, and it's just a routine flyby of a small town. So let's fire up the auto tracker, and it does the 2D tracking. And now once it starts doing the 3D solving, you'll see that the field of view of the camera keeps on dropping and dropping, and the error is staying relatively high. So the solver hasn't really found the right solution to use for this shot, and that can be due to major tracking errors, such as moving vehicles in a shot like this, or to more subtle problems, such as trackers on reflections or lens distortion. So let's take a look at what we can do to help the solver get the right solution here, just with the tracking data as is. So our first line of defense is to turn on this slow but sure checkbox. And sure enough, once we fire up the solver again, it then finds the correct solution. And you see we get a field of view around 37, 38 degrees, and we get a comparatively low error. So we've gotten really the, the right solution here. Alternatively, we can give the solver a motion hint that says, hey, the camera is moving to the right. So I've turned off the slow but sure and told it the camera is moving to the right. And that lets it take a more specific look around the kinds of solutions that are likely to be right and avoid doing searches for solutions that aren't really likely to, to be right. And you see, again, it gives us the right sort of solution. And we come up with a low error rate. And of course, we could we could do both of these and, and do the solve also. Now, one of the questions you might ask is, you know, what happens in a more complicated shot here? The camera is simply moving to the right the whole time. What about when the camera is making a more complex motion? And that brings us to the next set of controls, which are these begin and end frames. And those are the frames that the solver is initially looking at to decide what's happening in the shot. And these are the two frames that are involved with this motion hint. So in a more complex shot where the camera maybe moves first to the right and then back to the left, I would set up the begin and end frames, you know, maybe in the section when it's moving to the right and use the right motion hint. Whereas if I wanted to use the, the portion to the left when the camera is moving to the left, you know, I'd, I'd use appropriate begin and end frames and use the, uh, the left motion hint. So this lets you give Synthize an idea of what's happening during, you know, a particular section of the move. And it also lets you tell Synthize, you know, what's a reliable portion of the shot? What portion of the shot is really exhibiting strong perspective shifts that it should be looking at? And that's especially important when you have an object track, say, where, you know, part of the time the, the object might be moving around a lot, but isn't really spinning around enough to give you any kind of perspective shifts that can be used to get a 3D solve. So in that kind of a shot, you use the begin and end frames to pin down what's the most useful part of the shot and let Synthize work on that part of the shot. And I'll point out that you want to pick frames here where there are many frame, many trackers in common between these two frames. Because it's only the only trackers that can be used are ones that are visible in both of those two frames. So, you know, if you pick some frame at the beginning of the shot, some frame at the end of the shot, and during the shot, you know, the, the set of trackers is completely changed over then you're going to actually get an error message from Synthize saying that there aren't any trackers in common between those two. So there's a little thought that goes into that process. So, you know, at, at this point, I'll just point out, you know, once we've got initial solve, we can go and now run the tracker cleanup. You don't want to run the tracker cleanup when the solve isn't good in the first place. That's just going to wind up taking out perfectly good trackers. If the sob is decent, then you can go and do the tracker cleanup. And the other thing that we would want to do in this particular shot, as it turns out, 
is to turn on the lens distortion. And now we can go through and run the solve again. And now you see we get a pixel error that's quite low, down around four tenths of a pixel, which is about half of what it was just uh, before we turned on the lens distortion. So that gives you an idea of really what, what was causing the problem in the first place. So hopefully this gives you an idea of some of the tools that you have available in Synthize to be able to work with the solver to get the solution that you want. Take care.